Sure. Sure you're happy. It's raining, you've been shopping, you found a dry place to sit. <laughs> You'd applaud anything tonight. How are you? Good. Okay. I'm also available in a beefcake calendar for Christmas. <laughs> Look, don't be confused because you see Ed standing over there. I'm not a contestant on Star Search. <laughs> I don't have any jokes tonight. You take master charge? <laughs> you see the rain out there? Yes. Would you like to stay for the night? You're never going to get home. How did y'all? How did y'all? How did y'all get out here? Oh, your cars, cars have been stripped long ago. <laughs> anyway, I'll welcome you. This is The Tonight Show, the show that asks the burning question, will Perry Como find a place to go in time for Christmas? <laughs> <laughs> I like that, huh? I knew it wasn't a biggie, but we... We do them from the back row of the band sometimes. I saw a strange sight driving to work today. Girl on Sunset Boulevard with a sign that said, Cabbage Packed Hooker, Take Me Home. <laughs> I finally saw one of those dolls today. The Cabbage Patch. Have you seen one up close? I don't know what they're all talking about. Looks like a Barbie doll that just let herself go. I don't get it. You get a hammer and take a Barbie doll and you got a Cabbage Patch doll. Anyway, it's getting close to Christmas. Uh, I can tell I was in a supermarket today. I saw one of those uh, supermarket tabloids. You know the kind I'm talking about. And on the headline it said, Mrs. Claus's Kinky Revelation. Oh. Yes. Santa let the reindeer watch. Oh. Come on, that's, that's too low. You got your Christmas plans all made? Half and half. Half and half. I, I don't know what I'm going to do this Christmas. I went to the store today and bought tinsel for one. <laughs> Then you, you understand half and half. Yeah. <laughs> cool, that's cool. Cheap shot. Uh, you know, they used to have a lot of office Christmas parties. I guess those are kind of phased out because people went to the parties. They usually got bombed or something and said terrible things to each other. But NBC is starting some uh, parties here today. They had one on the set of the, uh, of the A-Team. You know that show? Nice Christmas party. Destroyed the set. <laughs> Mr. T misunderstood when they told him to deck the halls. <laughs> I cannot get used to Christmas in Los Angeles. I grew up in the Midwest. It is not the same. Or New York. That's Christmas, right? I mean, back east you roast chestnuts. Out here they stir-fry leeches in a wok. It doesn't make it out here. Santa Claus has himself paged at the Beverly Hills Hotel. At the pool. You know how Ed celebrates Christmas every year? He force feeds brandy to a chicken and then watches him lay eggnog. <laughs> anyway, uh, you've probably checked the TV guide, the list of holiday specials. Hundreds of them. On my favorite comes up with Joan Rivers. The Joan Rivers Christmas special called Can We Talk? <laughs> Joan comes out and says, Santa's so fat his size went condo. Can we talk? Christmas special. Is this on? <laughs> Boy, that's desperate time, isn't it? No. <laughs> it's, the Christmas decorations are pretty out here, though. I went by your... You go to that church on Rodeo Drive, don't you? It's uh, St. Francis of Agucci. It's a, it's a show business church because a lot of Hollywood people go there. Uh, you should have seen the priest's sermon the other day. He used a hand mic, had Charlie Callis open for him. <laughs> I mean, boy. <laughs> well, not many churches, they have a wine list for a communion. I mean, uh, wow. You must pay a visit to Rodeo Drive. You can shop there if you want to, but it is a little expensive. They won't accept cash unless you give them a driver's license and two credit cards. <laughs> then you can pay cash. <laughs> Tis the season to be jolly, friends. <laughs> the Columbia landed, I guess, about, what, four o'clock yesterday afternoon? They landed eight hours late. 
As you know, it was a little bit of a scare. They landed safely. The luggage is still orbiting. <laughs> Did you see uh, the latest faux pas by a member of uh, President Reagan's staff? Your lookalike, incidentally, yeah. Ed Meese, uh, <laughs> kind of put his foot in the mouth because you know what he said? Ed Meese, and I quote him, he said, there is no hunger in America. He's, he said people stand at uh, food kitchens only to get free food. <laughs> you believe that? Yeah. Did you know nowadays when anybody in the White House makes a stupid statement... James Watt gets a royalty? <laughs> so, anyway. We've got a good show for you tonight. A very funny gentleman, uh, an actor, Charles Grodin is with us tonight. Two of my... Two of my all-time favorites. Bob and Ray. Two of the best fabulous in the country. Young man from the University of Nebraska who's probably one of the greatest running backs that college football has ever produced. Mike Rozier is with us tonight. He is, of course, is the, uh, who, of course, is the Heisman Trophy winner. And uh, aren't you going to interview somebody? Yes, I am. Well, just don't tell them who it is. All right. It's has a famous to, doctor. Famous doctor. Has to do with a Cabbage Patch doll yeah. uh, thing. This, we'll find all about that. Thank you for coming. We'll be back in just a moment. Doctor in the NBC Orchestra. Yes. Beautiful. The hottest selling toy this season is a stuffed doll called the Cabbage Patch Kids. Now, these dolls are so popular that riots have actually broken out in stores where adults have been trampling old ladies and children to get them. To explain the psychological ramifications of this hysteria, we've invited noted psychologist Dr. Joyce Sisters. Please welcome Dr. Sisters. Footstool, Dr. Sisters, yes. It's so, so good, Dr. Sisters, to have you here with us. Thank you. I'm, I'm very smart. <laughs> Could you clear up one thing for our viewers? What's the difference between a psychiatrist and a psychologist? Well, a psychiatrist is a doctor who does work with emotionally disturbed people. A psychologist is a doctor who does game shows and guest shots on the love boat. <laughs> Did you... Did you see me on last week's episode? Oh, no, I missed it. I was in the scene where Van Johnson got seasick and threw up on my snapshot of Freud wearing mesh underwear. <laughs> <laughs> now, Dr. Sisters, is this uh, Cabbage Patch Kids doll... Uh, is that a craze unique? Uh, not really. It's similar to other sociological phenomena like pet rocks, hula hoops, and... Showing your breast to zoo animals. Wait a minute. Showing your breast to zoo animals was never a craze. Well, I'm glad you told me. I was just on my way to Marineland to... to... to flash Shamu. Now, did you... Did you know that the face of every pa Cabbage Patch Kid is different? Each face is different? Yes, that's right. They're especially crafted, so each one is unique and individual. Well, just like a human baby. Well, yes, except a human baby doesn't have his eyes hammered on by some guy in Hong Kong. <laughs> whose, whose last job was an extra in a Bruce, Bruce Lee movie. <laughs> <laughs> what makes you an expert on the... <laughs> What makes you an expert on the psychology of dolls? I was the staff psychologist on The Muppet Show. Oh, that sounds, that sounds fascinating. Oh, it was. I treated one Muppet for a rather severe sexual identity problem. My word, which one was that? Well, it would be, of course, unethical for me to divulge confidential patient information, but let's put it this way. He, she used to be called Mr. Piggy. <laughs> <laughs> you think you'll ever see a... Do you think you'll ever see a craze to... Uh... I 
think you'll ever, ever see a craze to equal this one? Yes, in 1984, they're coming out with a Cabbage Patch president. Oh, that's ridiculous. Well, not really. Already he has more votes than George McGovern. I should say delegates. <laughs> I should say anything. <laughs> It's well known, uh, Doctor, that during the holidays, many people get depressed. Did you ever have a bad holiday season? I experienced a major traumatic event in December 1970. I was appearing on Hollywood Squares, mm -hmm. and Orson Welles fell through the square above me. <laughs> Took the fireman three hours to chip me off Charlie Weaver. <laughs> what do you do nowadays when you get the blues? Well... I do self-hypnosis techniques in order to get in touch with my inner feelings. If that doesn't work, I get in touch with three Norwegian sailors. That usually brings me right out of it. <laughs> like any other toy, this doll won't last forever. What should a parent do if the doll breaks? I would pound very hard on the chest. Of the doll? What? Of the doll? No, the salesman who sold me that piece of crap. <laughs> By the way, I hope you viewers at home will watch me at halftime on the upcoming Gator Bowl. I'll be doing, on the 50-yard line, doing a public therapy session with a man who believes that he's kept alive and awake at night by loud barking from the ghost of Elvis Presley's dog. <laughs> well, it's always a pleasure to see you, Doctor. Well, thank you for Please asking. come back. It was very nice talking to you. No, no, I'm awfully sorry. You can't have... No, no. You cannot have this. This is the property of The Tonight Show. You can't have that. Well, it used to be, Mr. McMahon, but as much as I deplore violence in interpersonal relations, I'll waste you if you don't turn it over. I can, I can get six grand in Beverly's Hills for a hot cabbage patch doll. Remember, I'm okay, and you're okay. But you won't be if you try to follow me. You got it? Go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead, big guy. Make my day. Dr. Fisher. Dr. Fisher. We'll be right back right after this message. Don't go away. Thank you. It's a shame you were uh, called away and missed our first guest. Uh, she was just terrific. Wonderful. I, I hope my mother went to bed early tonight. <laughs> I thought it was great when we were rehearsing today, and you're in that garb, and oh. your son walks in behind you and says, was, Hi, Dad. I was oh. sitting here, and my son, my second son, Ricky, was looking for me. No. Somebody said, He's out there on the set. And he looked at the monitor, and he saw Ed sitting here. He says, No, that's Ed. He said, No, the other person. <laughs> Hi, Dad. And he came up behind me and says, Hi, Dad. How you feeling? I've been a mother and father to both of you. Yes. <laughs> anyway, uh, our apologies to, to Joyce Brothers for letting us, uh, like, like she gave us permission. That's right. What is it, Fred? Uh, Pacific Daylight Time, is it? <laughs> As you get older, you stare at the clock a lot. Hey! It's seven to float about. <laughs> the clock is moving. <laughs> Now, the correct show time. Good, correct I'm glad of that. <laughs> oh, man, just staring. Look at that. Oh, that second's just ticking by. <laughs> My first guest I've, I've always enjoyed. Mm, me too. <laughs> Good. That's, that's nice. We both, both have enjoyed him. He's a fine actor. He's going to be soon seen. Seen soon. Seen soon. <laughs> Fucking Chinese. Seen soon. Seen soon. He'll be soon be seen. That's what it says. We'll soon be seen. Should be, he'll be seen soon, seen. <laughs> now you get it straightened out, it'll be over. <laughs> Only, we'll see him sometime in the near future. He's going to be in a movie coming out soon. It's uh, Steve Martin's The Lonely Guy, and it's with Gene, and, and with Gene Wilder, and I guess another one, two movies here, obviously. And with Gene Wilder and The Woman in Red. Before starting his own movie, oh, we're finally getting to his movie. Called Dreamer. I didn't know that, there's three different pictures here. But they're soon going to be out. Would you welcome, please, uh, before he, he dies, <laughs> Charles Grodin.
very attractive woman. <laughs> you really are. I just, uh, I just worked with Dr. Joyce Brothers. You did? Yeah, you did that uh, very, very well. Very accurate. Thank you very much. You're very welcome, I'm sure. <laughs> Never had that compliment before. You're I'm a very sure attractive you're... woman. That's your story. <laughs> Didn't you, uh... Didn't you play? <laughs> didn't you play in Charlie's Aunt? I did. I played a woman recently, and uh, and you're playing a woman now, and uh, they're winning. Yeah. Do you find it difficult to play a woman? Do you? Uh, well, I don't know what I do. It's fun, isn't it? Yeah, it's kind of be silly. honest. Yeah. I don't. I don't do I it. I like at it. It's I easy. don't do it at home. I mean, when I'm, you know. <laughs> do it here for, for silliness. It's, it's for, a lot easier for... than playing a man. What's that? I, I mean, that's what we're doing right now, right? Yeah. All right. Now, is it easier to sit here now as yourself or to be a woman? I find it a lot easier to play a woman than to sit here. Well, that's because you a man. Can, that's because you can hide in the characters. That's, that's what you're that's, saying. Well. Okay. Okay, that's fair enough. That's, what you want to, that's the way you want to put it. That's the way I want to put it. <laughs> My show, I can put it any way I want. <laughs> What is this? I seem to be all mixed up here on this, uh... Oh, you are in a starring role in The Lonely Guy, I right? I certainly have. And then yeah. your own pick... I haven't You're... fallen out of the business. No, I know that. Oh, right. I know that. Uh, and then your own movie's called The Dreamer. Dreamers. 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 It just says, you say what it says, sir? You see an S on that? No, I don't. It's Dreamer. <laughs> There's a number of us in it. It's Dreamers. Dreamers. Yes, it is. Your how, 15th film, somebody said. Uh, yes, I've, I've done about 15 pictures, yes. Well, that's, that's what I said. Fifteen. Yes, I thought it was exactly fifteen. You say it's about fifteen. I've, I've played men in every one of them. <laughs> um, Charlie's aunt thing was on cable, so, you know, that's... Well, that's right. That's right. That's a woman. What kind of a picture is this? What? I don't know. What Look. picture are you referring to? Got a lot of pictures, John. Dreamers. Oh, God, I don't know. Okay. <laughs> What are you going to do for Christmas? That takes care of that. I don't know. Come on, tell us a little bit about it. I mean... What? Well, before you get into a picture, don't you try to find out if that's the right kind of picture for you to make? Well, I wrote this picture. Well, wrote why wouldn't you know what it was about? I mean... I know what it's about. It's just that uh, I'm not really prepared to talk about it uh, here in front of uh, the country. The picture's going to come out probably in the fall, and I don't want to, like tell everybody what it's about right now. Well, don't you want to kind of create like some interest in it? That's the uh, most guests you see when they... <laughs> can, I wait to get, can I wait to get out here and tell the audience this is a wonderful picture, it's about so-and-so, to kind of entice them to come in and see it and buy tickets. You see, I'm not the... that kind of a guest, actually. I, I... <laughs> I've never been a guest that came out here and tried to sell these various pictures. You know, I want that in the introduction to That's establish I, my credibility. I, I respect that because yeah. it doesn't look like you're huckstering. Exactly right. Or just out for the quick buck in this business like so many uh, people are. That's right. And you have a longer career if you can conceal that you are. <laughs> That's you're true. Right? That's right? true. Is money important to you at all in your life? How's your mother? What are you doing for Christmas? Do you like a bon good bonfire? <laughs> no, is money important to you at all? You can answer any of these or none of them. I have lots of questions I can come up with, you know, these... No. It's not important. Well, it's not as important as it is to some other people. <laughs> it makes sense. In other words, you don't... You don't... Uh, you don't... You don't spend much money, is that it? No, I don't. Are actually. you frugal? Would you call yourself a frugal? I wouldn't call myself frugal. So you do go out and spend it when you... I am frugal. Oh, you are frugal. I just wouldn't call myself wouldn't call frugal. yourself No, I try to come off, you know, open and generous and do you, loose. Do you spend a lot of money at Christmas on gifts for, for friends? No. All right. Cheap, is that a better word? Money's not important. Well, money's not important, but I... I uh, you see, I, I'm asking, the reason I'm asking these questions to Charles, has anybody ever called you Chuck? Never. 
<laughs> Never. That's just unusual. This is the first time. Most that, kids, uh, whether they're called Charles or called Chuck when they're kids. Weren't you one of your little kid called Chuck? I never, never heard that before. You don't look like the kind of guy that, that you'd call Chuck. So let's get, let's get off of that. Let's get off Charles, of that. Charles, okay. Yeah. You ever been called Shirley? <laughs> You ever been called oh, Joyce? That's right. Okay, we're going to take a break here, and uh, this this interview is going to soar when we come back. We'll take a break. Before I return to this in-depth and probing interview of Mr. Groden, I forgot to mention that Doc will be appearing with his group Zebron in Anchorage, Alaska at the Captain Cook Hotel this Sunday, this Sunday, December the 11th. And then he'll be in Bellingham, Washington at the Bellingham Yacht Club <laughs> on Monday, December the 12th and Tuesday, December the 13th. Have a good time up there, Doc. Thank you. Now, the reason I'm asking you, the reason I'm asking you these questions, which seem like they uh, are out of sequence, is to find out we've known each other how long? When I say known, you've been on this show for 10 years. Yeah. But we don't know each other. I mean, we don't have cookouts at each other's house. or no. We've never really gone to dinner together and sat and just talked and say, hi, Ch oh, Charles, how right. are you? Right. So I'm really trying to find out something about you. Mm -hmm. I get the feeling you're a rather um, personal, a very private person. Well, uh, no more than you. <laughs> well, um, you see, when you usually ask a question, uh, the host hopes that he'll get back more than... <laughs> one sentence, otherwise you run out of questions very quickly, so maybe if I rephrased it and said, explain to me why you are a private person. Well, I just don't feel it's anyone's business, really, you know. <laughs> but I come that on, private, huh? I, yeah, I come on this show uh, essentially for the money. <laughs> On, and see, that's honest. I like that. I put in my five, ten minutes what it is. I get the thing. I go home. I don't want to reveal, like, my innermost secrets coming out here the way a lot of people feel they have to do. If I can get through ten minutes without revealing too much, I've, I've done it again. <laughs> you got another shot in you. I got another shot. You still don't know anything, you know. <laughs> and you're going to keep asking me back until you find I'll something find else. Something right? out, yeah. <laughs> well, uh, I never see you. Uh, not, not that I'm a big party goer. I don't go out much myself, you know, but I, I never see you. Right. I never see you either. Well, that, that, that would figure, uh, because I don't see you. Um, do you do you go to anything at all? On no, I, I've never uh, gone anywhere. <laughs> I've never seen you. Well, I go to charity functions occasionally, or uh, dinners, or tribute no, dinners. I've never seen, I've seen you. Uh, last week I've and... seen you in the uh, in the sauna before the show, but that's it. We don't we don't have a sauna. <laughs> How do people contact you when they want you to do something? How do they, I mean, how do, how do they find you? I mean, how do they find me? Yes, I mean, do you live here in California? Or no. Or, without giving an address. <laughs> I mean, what state do you live in? New York? I'm in the east. You're in the east. <laughs> Atlantic Ocean side. Yes. Uh -huh. You're, are you married? Yes. Let me see. You have a family? I have a daughter. Ah, what does she do? No, she doesn't mind if we talk about her. Now we're getting somewhere. What does she do? She's a comedy writer. Are you serious? She wrote this. <laughs> does she really write comedy? Yeah. Who for? No one yet. But she will soon. She just come out here within the last three days, and she's going to probably be writing in television. Well, good for her. Yeah, I well, think so. What's her name? Marion. Marion, the comedy yeah. writer. Yeah. Good. Let's talk about Marion. Yeah. Pretty girl? She's six years old. <laughs> she's, well, it takes time to get established. Yeah, no, by she's... The uh, time she meets agents and everything, and they get back to her, she'll be uh, probably 18. Uh, <laughs> yeah. She's uh, She's brilliant. She's brilliant. Yeah. I'll get a call from William Morris. Let's take a nap. No. She's, she's, uh, she's six years old. Very inside joke. But, she's uh, with William Morris. She's with William Morris. Yeah. Good, good. Yeah. She'll, she'll go far. Now, let's get back to Dreamers, just to touch on it. Yeah. Uh, is this your first movie you've written? Yeah. It is the first Are you one. happy with it? I think it's, uh, 
Have you cast it yet? I think it's, uh... Oh, excuse me. All right, I'll right. go back. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, I'm very happy with it. I, I look forward to seeing it. I think it'll be out in the fall, and uh, it's an MGM picture. Have and you it's, cast uh, it yet? Yes. Who else is in it? Steve Martin, Gilda Radner, Penny Marshall, Tyne Daly. Well, that's a fine cast. Hopefully, uh, Jack Warden, Jack Weston, possibly yourself, if you're... <laughs> what do you mean, possibly me? Yeah, well... Is this an offer you're making publicly? That we'll see. To appear in your picture? Matter what kind of money are we talking about? Big. <laughs> big, big money. Mega. Mega bucks. Mega bucks. Lots of, <laughs> lots of bread. For one day? You got it. And I'd like the money in cash in the parking lot. <laughs> for, reason, for reasons that are my own. The okay. role is that of a woman. I don't care. <laughs> what age? <laughs> Whatever you like. What else you want to talk about? Anything uh, particularly? Well, you're here. Where are you going to spend Christmas? I'm with uh, Perry Como. <laughs> okay. You're... Would you like to go to dinner some night? With whom? <laughs> with me. Seriously? Just... No. <laughs> No, if it's going to be like here, why go for that kind of money? Sure, sure I'm serious. They'll just go out and cut it up like we're doing now. Just have a great time. I mean, your wife's obviously not out here with you, right? Yes, she is. Well, she's here with yeah. you? Ah, well, yeah. Bring her along. And you? I'm alone. You're alone? I'm alone. The three of us? Well, when I say alone, I don't mean alone alone. <laughs> We're gonna take a break. Right. Are you okay by you? Sure. Good. Sure. Okay. We'll uh, we'll do Bob and Ray are here tonight, and so is Mike Rozier. <laughs> we are back. My uh, my guests, Bob and Ray, tell me they're quite impressed with the preparations going on here in Los Angeles for the next year's Olympic Games, and they've assigned their ace sports reporter Biff Burns to ferret out an Olympic story, and he's done just that. Here's Biff and his guest. Thank you. Thank you, Johnny. My guest here in the sports room is a fellow named Big Steve Werbler. It's a name that you're going to be hearing a lot of because he's the world champion high jumper, and I want to welcome you to the sports room, Big Steve. Well, uh, thanks, uh, Biff. It's great to be here. Uh, there's a correction there, though. Uh, you said I was the world champion uh, high jumper. Right. Actually, I'm the world champion low jumper. Well, there can't be too much difference between the two events. Uh, no, but what's the... your record in the low jump? Uh, I've jumped 57 feet 8 inches, which is about 50 feet farther than the record for the high jump. Well, that would seem like there is a lot more difference between two events than we uh, had thought at first. Would you care to explain it? Well, uh... Sure. You see, in high jumping, you stand in a low place, and you see how high up you can jump. Right. In low jumping, you stand in a high place, and see how far down you can jump. You and I both know the answer to this next question, but for the uh, sake of the viewers looking in who may not, uh, would you care to comment on the whole thing? Well, uh, it's pretty basic. Uh, actually, I might point out here, though, that if you jump from a high place and you get killed, and that jump does not count. <laughs> See, that's why uh, my 57 feet 8 inches still stands as an all-time record. I should imagine. Now, this may seem like an embarrassing question to throw at you, Big Steve, but isn't this kind of a dumb sport that would only, uh, only appeal to big lummoxes like yourself with uh, rocks in their head? Well, I guess you could make a pretty good argument for that, Biff. But, uh, personally, uh, I feel low jumping has it all over, high jumping. You see, in high jumping, you can uh, strain a muscle or hurt yourself on the jump up and break a bone on the fall down. But in low jumping, all you have to worry about is what happens to you 
on the way down. Uh, I guess there's a certain amount of logic to that, but I don't think... Uh, I think it's too complicated for most of the viewers to understand. Now, you are trying to get uh, low jumping accepted as a major track and field event, is that right? And even in the Olympics. That's right. There's a promoter back in New York who wants to uh, rent the Palisades along the Hudson River and have us jump into the water. But uh, that would not be an official jump because you can't land on water or anything soft like that. Oh, I thought the object of the whole thing was just to live through the event. Yeah. I didn't know the uh, no, I, uh, you landed on had anything to do with I it. I jump mostly on asphalt and concrete. <laughs> but uh, you can jump on the natural ground too, providing it hasn't been softened by rain or moisture of any kind. See? How about astroturf, stuff like that? Oh, that's okay too. Providing the phony grass isn't too tall to break your fall. Break the or fall. been softened by moisture, either. <laughs> well, I can see the, uh, the rules are pretty strict on that. Like if, you, uh, if you get low jumping accepted as an Olympic event, you'll have to do it from the window of a downtown office building, something yes, like that. Yes, and that's not too satisfactory, yeah, Biff, because uh, in case of a tie, then, you have to go up one story at a time, which is 10 feet. See? So, no, I think it'd be much better if we could use a fire department ladder uh -huh. go up a little bit at a time. Uh -huh. <laughs> Makes more sense. Yeah, it does. How many entrants from all over the world do you uh, plan would go into a thing like this low jumping? Well, from the mail I've received, there are two others. <laughs> there's, uh, there's a Tibetan who puts himself in a trance and jumps off mountains. Uh -huh. And there's another guy in France who's kind of flaky, too. All right, well, there are two, and then you make three. There would be three of you in all, then. Well, no, I'm decided not to compete. I think it'd take a real fruitcake to think he could break that 57-foot, 8-inch record that I already hold, see? Yeah. And I've learned through experience that low jumping over 30 or 40 feet can give you a real headache. <laughs> so I decided, who needs it? Well, I was going to say that at the outset of the interview, but... Uh... <laughs> said it for me. Our guest in the sports room was Big Steve Werbler, and this is Biff Burns saying, till next time, this is Biff Burns saying so long. Thank you, Big Steve. <laughs> Bob and Ray. <laughs> Low jumping. Yeah. Just <laughs> funny routine. Never heard you do that one before, is it? No, we haven't done that before. That's no one at the Olympics. <laughs> <laughs> you, got a, you got a book out, too. We we're going to have a piece to do from it. I guess we didn't have time tonight. This is a call from approximately coast to coast. <laughs> it's the Bob and Ratio. What are the Are these all uh, things that you've done uh, over the years? Uh, well, they're scripts mostly from uh, that new public radio uh, program that right. we, we've uh, just uh, decided to do. It'll be on the air in January. That's the title of it, From Approximately Coast to Coast. Yeah. It's the yeah. Bob and Ratio. <laughs> You're still Soon to be a major motion picture. No kidding. I, I, I didn't know that. <laughs> Wasn't room for that on the show. Good to see you guys again. Yeah. You've, you've won the, uh, understand, the Peabody Award again for the third time? Third time. Congratulations. That's yeah. a very distinguished and uh, prestigious award. Thank you very much. Yeah. You guys give each other's Christmas gifts after knowing each other all the years you've worked together. How do you handle that? Well, like anything else, after we've been 38 years, you forget. You don't know what to give a guy after yeah. 38 years. It's hard to find something different, you know. Yeah. It's like trying to shop for Richard Dawson. Yeah. I mean, he's received <laughs> everything there is you know, from his contestants. Have you made a decision in this? Uh, I think you're going to give him some goldfish this year. It's a nice gift, don't you That's think? That's good. I don't goldfish? Have... Goldfish, yeah. Do you, does he like Goldfish? I don't know. Do you like goldfish? Yeah, goldfish well, you're going to get them great. anyway. <laughs> if you'll accept an aardvark. <laughs> yeah. That means you have to get in a, an aquarium and... Uh... All the stuff. No, I'm just going to get two or three in the five and ten cents, so I put a little glass bowl. Well, that's right. They only live about ten days. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> well, a lot of, lot of, lot of them end up you know where. Yeah. Sure. Which one of your uh, kids is a, is a comedy writer? Seriously? Fine. My son, Chris. Writes for the David Letterman Show. Letterman, yeah. That is great. Yeah, I'm very proud of him. Yeah, has he enjoyed it? Has, has he ever written anything for you? No. Two fellows? No. Yeah. Well, that's really great. I'm glad to hear it. We're going to take a break? We'll be right. Mike, did Mike Rozier make it in? Yeah. Yeah, we were a little wondering today with the traffic and the rain whether Mike Rozier would make it, but he is here. So we'll take a break and we'll be right back. This next young man, 
I'm delighted to introduce this next young man. He's not only a superb athlete, but he happens to be uh, a student at the university from which I graduated, and he probably has done a great deal to help make uh, the Nebraska Cornhuskers. Uh, a lot of people call them probably the most powerful and best college football team ever to play. He's the second player in college history to rush over 2,000 yards in a season. Mike Rozier. Look, you could get through all of those guys, make all those cuts, make all those touchdowns, and you could hardly get in from the airport today. <laughs> you should have got out and started to run. Yeah, it's pretty hard. Did you, know? you think you were going to miss it tonight? Yeah, I did at first. You know, it's kind of rain outside and the traffic was real heavy. Yeah. But I um, had a good driver. Yeah. Well, congratulations. You got the, uh, the award was what, just the day before yesterday? Well, yeah, it was announced Tuesday, but I got the trophy last night in New York. Yeah, did you bring it out with you? No, nah, I left it home to my mom. You know, I gave it to my mom. You yes. know, they announced it, and I... No, she gave me, well, she helped me out so much, so I left it home to her and gave it to her. Yeah, you've always said that. You give great credit to your, uh, to your folks uh, for uh, supporting you. Uh, oh, yeah, they, you know, they backed me whatever I do. You know, if I wasn't playing football, whatever I'm doing, you know, they behind me 100%. You know, that's one thing about my family. And I think that's why I'm making it, you know, doing so well now, yeah. because they're always behind me and give me 100%. You know, watching you do those runs, they say you can take some football players, and which is true, if a guy plays tackle or, or guard, then you can beef them up and, and make them good football players, or you can teach a guy to run roots and catch the ball. But when it comes to running backs, it's more than that. It's, it's got to be a gift. All the great running backs, whether it's O.J. Simpson or, or Jim Brown and all the rest of them, seem to have a gift for that, and I don't think you can teach that, can you? Do you, you feel that when you're even no, young? I don't feel that you can't teach it. Um, you know, I feel like you said, it's a gift from God. You know, God gave me a gift, and I'm out there doing the best I can at it. You know, I don't need to waste it, you know, so I'm out there doing the best I can at it. Um, you now, you can't teach it, like, like you said, yeah. but... um. No, but you, the coaches that help you out as far as, you know, mentally get your head together and right. tell you go out there and do the best you can at it. I just go out there every game, just hang in there, but it's, you know, it, it don't look as easy as it look on TV, though. Yeah, you, know, it's kind yeah of you, you, you make it look like those guys are not even trying. You just cut around. Of course, Nebraska's got one of the great coaches in Tom Osborne. Oh, yeah, Coach Osborne, he's a great coach. Um, and plus, you know, I got a good offensive line, you know, 270, yeah. 280 guys in front of me, and that's, yeah. that's a lot, a lot of it. My job makes it a lot easier for me to run through people. Yeah, how many how many All Americans? You had what three All Americans or four on the team? Uh, oh yeah, me, Dean Cooler, yeah, Dean Stein Cooler, Urban Fire, right. me and Turner. Somebody said I think it was John Riggins uh, of the Steelers said one weekend. He, did you hear that quote? No. He said, "Who are you playing next week?" And he says, "I hope it's not the University of Nebraska." <laughs> uh, they say it's probably one of the best college teams of all time. When you were in high school, the recruiting uh, in this country is intense. They must have been after you in high school. Why did you decide the University of Nebraska? Well, everybody wanted me to go to different schools, right. um, you know, um, but um, I missed my grade point average by one point. You know, right. I messed around in high school too much, you know. <laughs> and, um, you know, fortunately, I had to go to Coverville, Kansas for one year. But, um, you know, the reason why I chose Nebraska is because, you know, they stuck with me. You know, they, they treated me more as a person instead of a player. Right. And they felt that um, if, if I couldn't come right out of high school to go to university, they recommend Ju the Juco school for me, and I went down there. For this That's great. One year. Now, of course, um, you're going to be drafted. You'll probably be the one number one draft choice in the in the NFL. What? Uh, how do you feel about that? Are you uh, entertaining offers already, or uh, <laughs> are they they coming around? Yeah, a lot of people come around bothering me and stuff <laughs> yeah, like that. Yeah, I wonder why. You know? <laughs> you know, but um, you know, I really can't talk to them yet. Um, right. I got the Orange Bowl. I'm thinking about the Orange Bowl. Go back to school. Play Miami school. in the Orange Bowl, right? Yeah, January second. Right. You know, then I got the East Shrine Bowl game. You know, for handicapped kids. That's what I'm doing when I get done playing ball. Yeah. How do you feel now? You've got the trophy. Now you got to go back to school and finish the rest of the rest of the term. Is this going to be kind of a letdown? No, nah, not really. Um, you know, I'm looking forward to going back. You know, this is one time I really miss it. Now all this traveling I'm doing. Right. You know, uh, other than that, I, I ain't like it. Like, you know, I didn't want to go practice and go to school. But now, you know, I miss the whole lot. And I'm ready to go back. Yeah. Where would you like to play? I guess maybe you can't even take a guess on that. It would, oh, maybe pros. somewhere close to home. You know, Giants. New, New York Orleans. Giants, perhaps? Yeah. Hope yeah. so. That's a, that's a good point. You talk about the Eagles, you know, but I don't know. It was up to the people who choose. Have you decided already? <clears throat> because as, as, a, as talented as you are, you're going to make a lot of money in pro ball. You decided which, how you're going to ha handle that? No, nah, I got to find a good agent. You want to be my agent? You be my yeah. Agent? <laughs> oh, sure. Yeah, I can get, I can get you. I can get you with the Burbank Scooters out here. It's a <laughs> small, minor team. But uh, have, have you thought, because you, you, you haven't had money in your life, and all of a sudden uh, you're going to be a, yeah, a wealthy saying, young man, and that's a responsibility. Yeah, most definitely is. Um, you know, like I said, I got to find a good agent and right. you know, invest it, put money away real good so I could 
live comfortably down the road. Yeah, because as a professional athlete, you know, your career may be five years or ten years. It's Yeah, it might be two years or one year. You know, you yeah. never know. You know, that's one reason why I'm going to find a good team that's have a good offensive line blocking for me. Yeah. <laughs> Get those big guys up oh, yeah, there. Get that? those big, heavy guys. Well, congratulations, Mike. We thank you for coming out here and making this trip, because I know that you're very much in demand, as well you should be. Everybody wants to meet you and congratulate you. You're a fine young athlete, and uh, congratulations again, and great luck in the Orange Bowl. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. We'll take a break. We'll be right back. What does the clock say, Fred? You've been watching the clock it's all night. Hurry up. I guess it is. Anyway, Mike, congratulations again. Are you heading right back uh, to the Midwest now, or are you going to stay out here for a few well, days? I'm staying for a few days. I'm going to have some dinner with the rest of the ball players that I made all American. Okay, good for you. Congratulations again. Bob and Ray, thanks for being out here. Nice, have a happy holiday. And uh, Charles, when your picture comes out, uh, please come back and tell us about it. Uh, okay? Don't, let it, don't keep it a mystery. All right, thank you. Okay. <laughs> Uh, next week, we have a lot of people who are going to show up here. Uh, well, our own staff, of course. Uh, the band, it'll be here. Doc will be here. Jack Lemon will be with us. Donna Summer, Mel Brooks, Andy Williams, Terry Garr, Alan King. And we've got a lot of brand new products to show you to complete your shopping. Thank you. Have a nice weekend. Good night.